Messy ass motherfucker. <laughs> hey everyone, Yan Zhao here. Uh, tonight we have the gentleman scoundrels, Eric Weathers and the Vonster and his moist cat. Yes, it's it's something I recommend. Uh, yes. Times. Uh, Always good. So mm -hmm. thank you both for coming back. So <laughs> we're glad to be here. Yeah, couldn't be anywhere else. I'm here good. I'm glad. A lot of Early updates up. since you guys were on here last time. So, Eric, you're getting close with Battle Brick Road, right? Almost it's there. So close. The The light at the end of the tunnel is growing ever so slightly. And then we will give birth. Yeah, then we'll birth this uh, beautiful, bouncing baby brick road. Um, Ooh, I, like I don't want to give a definite print date yet because we're still, like, I'm still drawing and the coloring, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I have uh, estimates in my head that are just going to have to stay in there for now, but soon TM. It's okay. If it's later, we'll just blame it on COVID. That's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're sort of coming down to the end, things are wrapping up. Uh, do you feel a sense of relief or... Is it more like you're you're kind of getting anxious for the next thing, or? Um, it's a bit of both. Like, there's no relief yet because I'm still in the thick of it. It's very like it's very hard hitting right now. Um, I'm spending a lot of time at the board getting things done, and then when I'm not doing that, if I'm not lettering something else for somebody else, you know, uh, then like today, I I spent a couple of hours uh, just making notes for the colorist. So that because mm -hmm. uh, the ch he's we're bringing on a, a different colorist for chapter two than we had on chapter one because um, the story changes the 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 theme not the theme but the just the world changes you know Dorothy goes from Kansas and takes the tornado and ends up in Oz it goes from sepia tone to black to, to color we're doing a similar thing so the style cool. I wanted to have a completely different style for the for the remainder of, of where we are in Oz. And so I spent a couple hours like going through um, a, uh, a breakdown sort of page by page for the new color saying, this is, this is what I was thinking for this page or this character or this, whatever. Um, and I had to it's, do that because man. I've added eight pages to this second chapter. Oh. Uh, so the script that I'm working off of is sort of no good for a colorist now because It'll be like page 14 and it'll I thought you learned just, from me. <clears throat> no. Don't add pages. <laughs> I can't help myself. So is I did it, that. Uh, it is going to make for a better book. I know that yeah, for a fact because yeah. I've seen it. Like, it's great. You've got something really special going here, man. Thank you. Is it uh, something like you wanted to do it, but you had to cut the pages off before you just thought you had to hit a certain number? or No. Uh, uh, it was originally... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, the, the page I'm working on right now, had I not added eight pages, would be the last page that I would have to draw. Not not in the story, but in page count. It, it was oh, originally going to be 26. The way you say that, it sounds like you just like, yeah, I just kicked myself. In the <laughs> I could have been done right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we, you know, we've, it was like, well, I would like, I need this scene here. And, and it would be great if we could give this scene a little bit more breathing room to flesh out this whatever. So it just sort of naturally happened. It was planned to be 26 per chapter. And the mm -hmm. first one actually ended up at 26. Um, even though we did make some of those shifts. Uh, but we were able to sort of do it, I guess, more gracefully and keep it at 26. But at this point, I'm like, I just want to make it. I, it has to be right. And I, I don't want to cut corners um, in terms of storytelling because of a arbitrary schedule. You know, I want the book to be right. Uh, so now, um, aside from not adding more pages, is there anything else you think uh, on the second round, like, ah, I shouldn't do this this time, or like, no, I definitely need to do something on the next time? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I feel like, you know, the, the, the campaign's been open for a while, and now we launched in, May, like, May of 2020, so it's it's been a while. Um and there was a lot that was going on, obviously, at the beginning of the campaign because it was when COVID was all over the place and um, <clears throat> people didn't know up from down at that at that point. Um, and in our, personally, we were like 
house shopping and that took months and that takes a lot of time away from your day. And, and I was, I probably lettered more this year than any year previously. So it was very, very busy um, just in work and all of that. And I, and I think I maybe didn't um, utilize my time as, as well as I should have. Um, And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm playing catch up, but I'm more mindful of it now so that I can uh, going into book two and and into future projects. um, Mm. I'm more aware of how long it takes me to do things and, I'll be able to schedule out a lot better than yeah, what you, I've done you, in the past. But I mean, you went into this as an accomplished artist of one book, but I mean, there were still things to learn, and you were you were always learning them and evolving your process and bettering yourself, which is just part of what I think makes you like a better artist than most. It's that coupled with like I think with your work ethic that gets you like an eighty four thousand dollar campaign like this. <laughs> Almost. <But> like, <laughs> But like it's interesting because I've watched Eric behind the scenes evolve to where like he mm-hmm. figures out faster ways to ink, like even to this day. So and he's like, that's gonna cut down time on this, like because he's working so yeah. hard to get this done and do it right though at the same time. So that's why there's added pages, but at the same time, he's always figuring out how to go faster and make it look cooler. So I think that's like a really good trait I see in him. You know, it's interesting to hear um like not counting, you know, like uh, Ethan and Malin and those guys, the people who have sort of come up who weren't pros before. It, it's interesting to hear, you know, the development cycles. And because that's kinds of things that pros used to talk about back in the day. Now, you guys aren't doing monthlies. So you're not under, you know, that much pressure. But it's interesting to hear, you know, especially when it really is, it's more money in your pocket. Like, okay, how can I do this faster? How can we get this out? You know, still quality, but reduce the, the process time. Right. Yeah. I mean, isn't that I, what any good athlete would do? Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Like, I'm an athlete. Better, faster, yeah. stronger, <clears throat> fatter. That's us. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> it's not true at all. Uh, no, the, the better and faster. Yeah. I, I like, you know, this is these industry veterans they, they, a lot of them have been doing it for 20 years or more and they sort right. of have it locked in mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. they do. It's, I would assume a lot of that process, I'm not saying art is muscle memory, but a lot of the process can be, you know, I do the thing and then I do that and then I do that and I'm done. And yeah. I, you know, I've not been doing it for that long and I'm still like figuring out for me, they're like little tricks, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that just sort of speed things up. Like, uh, for instance, I, I found out like, like, you know, I work, I I pencil digitally, but I ink traditionally in the, in the, in chapter two, I found that if I, interesting, if I, um, ink with one pen, one size the whole way through as sort of like a, a, a frame like to work off of, then it goes faster because then I can go over the top of the that thin line and just embellish where it needs to be, and then oh. fill in the blacks. And that that it's sort of like a conveyor belt sort of style. Whereas before, I would you know I'd ink this character here, but I, oh mm-hmm. I need a thicker pen for the outline of them. Then I'd switch and then I'd switch back and forth, back and forth. But if I just go through, uh, you know, with the, with the thin one and do everything, and then I go over it with the next level up and and so on. Uh, it just feels more natural and it goes through quicker. And that's one of the, that's one of the tricks I learned to, to make pages go a little bit faster, you know, and every, it's like Mm -hmm. every minute counts because it adds up in the end. It's kind of fun when you get to talk to us about it because you're talking like, we're like the garage band version (laughs) of comic creators. Yes, exactly. We rock rock, though. Like, and you get to see our process more. Like I, I do a sub stack where I'm like letting it all hang out, baby. Like you're in the garage, like practicing with me now, but like, <laughs> but like I, I think that's kind of cool. Like I think that makes it more fun. Um, oh, geez, you're there. Okay, I am there. there. The Von nice Kingdom. Film. Well played, the Von Kingdom guys. Um, this is my. Uh, this is like a blog where you get. It's like my work diary, but it's like for you to see what a couple times a month, maybe more than a couple actually, because I have so much content. I'm like wanting to churn out like new posts all the time Mm -hmm. but uh yeah this is like you guys will get to see me make a comic but the badass part is 
you get to download the digital uh, version of it after. So you get a digital copy when we're all done after you, you know, you watch the baby get made. Um, and you get to hear my notes and my ideas, maybe learn a little something along the way. Maybe learn something about yourself. Is it, <laughs> um, so it, with the digital comics that you download, like for example, uh, Terror in the Trenches, is it going to be like you sort of download that like page by page or um, Terror in the Trenches is different. These are like it's supplementary. Finished. I'm going to give you guys like a finished Terror in the Trenches episode to download. Like you get the, you get the goods, but, and you also get a link to when I want to physically publish it to get mm -hmm. a account too, for being like, oh. on Substack. so you get a discount on the physical and you get the digital. See, that's interesting. Cause I had kind of the same idea, but in reverse, um, I'm working on a D and D campaign guide right now. Um, and I'm going to start something like this, but it's going to be, um, like you, you can buy maps, you can buy like D and D one shots, um, that all sort of fit into this world, but they're all standalone. But I was going to do, if you buy my campaign, you get a year free subscription. Nice. So I was going to do it the other way around. So that's, that's interesting to give a discount. Is that easy to do, uh, between yeah. Substack and, um, and Indiegogo? Well, yeah. Indiegogo makes it easy. Cause you just send your Substack followers only an email. Mm -hmm. A mass email that's that has the link uh, to the secret. secret perk. Yeah. Uh I get it. So then it's like ah. So the uh, okay. Yeah. That makes and more sense. Make now. that pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So um, you know, it had me a little bit curious of why Substack. So recently, there's been a ton of pros uh, that have fled the sinking ships of Marvel and DC to head over to Substack, but like. Why Substack? Why not like locals? Or I know Eric, you're on Patreon. Um, is there something different, or or is it like you don't want to be the last guy on MySpace? Oh, um, Subst I'm not one of those. I'm not a big social media guy, and that mm -hmm. might be why Substack appealed to me because it goes back to it's a blog format. All it is is Patreon, but a blog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like, newsletter. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like a newsletter. So it's for people who write it's, for, and that's what I am at, man. It's for writers by writers and it's for, and the people that attracts are people who like to read newslettery article things and, you know, and get to see, learn new cool things or whatever. So yeah, that's, that's what this is. I just, for some weird, weird reason, it appealed to me because I love, I want to do this, but I don't. But mm -hmm. now I have a reason because I'm, you know, I'm getting subs. Yeah, I'm uh, yep. showing, and I'm, and it keep, it's like a work diary for me in a in a big way. So it's like awesome to look back on. You know, this is very personal in a weird way, like because I'm showing a lot of my work in a way I never have in real time, almost. You know. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. So this work, this format just worked for me. I wouldn't expect it to work for everyone. Not everyone wants to sit around writing like this all day about their stuff. Not me. No, Eric's not into that. <laughs> no, not at all. I can barely, I can barely read. So writing for me, is, <laughs> it's a, it's a struggle. <laughs> oh man. Um, not a resume, just like post yeah. pretty pictures and, and hope people like it. <laughs> so out of curiosity though, um, why use one of these sites as opposed to like, having your own website with a subscription service on that. Do you, do you think like the oh. buy-in to one of these pre-existing sites is better for subs? I have, no, I don't even think about that. I, I, cause this is such a roll of the dice. I kind of went in without expectations, but doing it myself feels like something that would require me to spend some money to pay a guy to set me up. Cause I don't know how to do ah. websites anymore. You're talking to a guy who like the, First time he made a website, it was like GeoCities, like welcome to my <laughs> Jedi Haven, sweet gifts of lightsabers for everyone. What I did the same thing. Outer space background. So like nowadays I'm like, I mean, I know how to use like, what is it? Like um, WordPress or something. Yeah, I'll use WordPress all day long. It's not that hard to even figure out. But like, I'm not like building sites anymore. Those days are done. I just want to like pay someone to make me something <laughs> awesome. So I didn't, I just felt like Substack was an easy way for me to just kind of get it done in an afternoon, set myself up and just try it, you know? Oh, that um, makes sense. I'll let you know how it goes though. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I am subbed. So we'll see. Oh, sweet. Oh, we'll I'm see how it goes. 
So it's the same. Uh, I, I'd say it's the same thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have to think about it. I can just post it. I can just make it, put it up there. Uh, and that, that's what I use on Patreon. And it's kind of neat, too. And I don't know if Substack has this. I'm sure there's a way you could do it, either with, like, Dropbox links or whatever. But, like, my latest uh, a Patreon post is um, – the Thea Gale Cyber Frog Toto uh, pinup mm-hmm. that I did, like the uh, like the uh, uh, swimsuit edition sort of style uh, Battle Brick Road image, and um, you know I'm able to post it, but then as an add on, or not an add on, but like as something that you can do in the post is you can attach things. So I attach the high res of the of the colors from Giuliana uh, Pratelli who uh, colors mm-hmm. coloring Arc Athena and colored uh, Sovereign Wolf. And then my line art, all, you know, full 300 DPI resolution in that way, you know, somebody backs, not back, somebody, you know, supports me on Patreon, they're going to have access to that. And as I, uh, I'm, I, I don't think I've even been doing it for a month yet. Uh, and as I, you know, continue to add content, that's my idea is um, to give access to that high risk stuff that people can do, whatever they, you know, you want to print your own, version go ahead i may hmm. sometime in the future put a print stop shop up and have it there but if you want to access to it now you know go for it and that is again something that it's just it's already built in and i don't have to think about building a, a website um so i figure why not and i'll just give it a shot see how it goes check back in a year and see if it was worth it and if so i'll keep going uh, all right cool yeah i was just wondering you know there, there is an issue with some of the sites, um, you know, they, they like banning people for whatever reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also, um, I know Patreon takes a cut, and I'm sure Substack's got to be taking a cut. Uh, so I was just wondering, you know, like, well, why not cut out the middleman? But yeah, yeah. it does make sense. If they, ha- if they have tools that are easy to use, it's not something you, you have to really think about. I know that... Um, you know, some people in the industry are starting to move a little more towards, uh, like a, a little bit away from the Indiegogo and relying on all these other sites and trying to keep everything, um, you know, make sure that you control it so that if for whatever reason a platform goes down or you get kicked off of one, uh, you're not screwed. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think we live in a world where any platform can decide to drop you whenever. So, you know, saying, drawing a line in the sand, saying I'm not going to go here because they did that to somebody in the past, I, that, w- that will be any company in the future. Like yeah. like Pronto Mail, the secure email mm-hmm. that you pay for while they're selling your emails anyways to, yep. you know. So, like, nothing is safe. So, if you if you want to be safe from all that, you just, you just don't, you just don't go on the internet at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that's just, true. You know, I don't, like, I don't, I just don't see, it, I don't see the, I do. the protest. I don't worry about uh, it. If it happens, like, let's, let's get it on. Let's fight. Let's do yeah. it. Like cancel me all you want. Like, let's see what happens. But like, until then I'm not, I'm not sweating. Like, like I'm an artist doing my thing. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not, you know what I mean? I mm, think that's the, true. The you and your moist cat. Hysteria. Yeah. I'm just a man with a moist kitty. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, just can't help it, right? Can you, Jasper? But uh, <laughs> but seriously, it's like I I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm gonna make great art, and my favorite artists have always been controversial anyway. So there you go. That is true. Yeah, Eric. Or we were talking a little backstage. Norm. Norm. It's a sad day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was watching Norm good all, good. all day today. Uh it's it's funny to think of you know, how much of an impact he made when he was on shows and then he would just disappear for years at a time, Mm -hmm. you know, and then he would pop up and his influence would, you know, go right back up again. Yeah. I mean, uh, he wasn't a superstar, you know, he wasn't a, uh, I mean, he was a household name, but, but it wasn't like, I don't know. He was a comics comic, I think. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think his biggest fans were other comedians, because uh, they un- they you know they understand it as the art form. But uh, you know, for me, he was always my my favorite. Uh, you know, uh, uh, SNL uh, news anchor. What is that called? Weekend Update. Yeah, yeah. he was always yeah, my favorite. Sure. You know, I was always <laughs> laughing when when the audience was groaning at his bad jokes, <laughs> his inappropriate jokes, not his bad ones. 
Um, and he was always great on Conan and, and, you know, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was unfortunate, you know, he was, he hid his, his illness, uh, uh from, from everybody. And, uh, it, it's strange. I, I actually found it strange, uh, this, this evening before the show started, uh, Bob Dole tweeted about it because he used to do the Bob Dole impersonation. And I swear to you, I thought Bob Dole had died twice. <laughs> yes. Past. Twice. Like from all that Viagra, I, I, I now maybe it, I don't know I don't know how it happened, but I, you know, like a year ago, Jesus. I thought I had heard that Bob Dole had died, and then or a couple of years ago, and then like a year ago or six months ago, I, I thought I heard it again. I was like, oh, I thought he died like two three years ago, and then this tweet comes out from his official Twitter, and I thought, oh, they're doing one of those, you know, somebody else has control of the account, and mm -hmm. I start reading the comments, and people are like, wow. You outlive Norm Macdonald. I'm like, what the? This is, is a ghost tweet, right? This is somebody that owns his account. And I go to Wikipedia, and it doesn't have a, a died date. So Bob Dole's still kicking. Uh, not Norm, unfortunately. It's, it just threw me off. as I thought I thought Bob Dole went You know, the third ago. time you think he dies, he appears behind you, Eric. <laughs> anyway. Um, I hope not. Yeah. Guys, just so, holding his pen. We have a... We have a lovely mailing list up um, for Terra in the Trenches. My baby, mm. my honey, my ragtime gal, my uh, my dark Avenger hero story. It's um, it's 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 very me because it's very horror, it's very funny, and it's very actiony. It's very gruesome, but it's definitely like the darkest and most superhero-y thing I'm probably will, probably will ever write. And I love it. <laughs> I love all the characters. I love this crazy story. Black Terror is forced to don his dark mantle once again after his entire New York neighborhood is like leveled by super Nazis hellbent on revenge against. <laughs> you gotta him. watch out for those super Nazis. Yeah, man, they're pretty bad. Yeah. They'll come. They'll mess things up. <laughs> and uh, then what ends mm -hmm. up happening is he's forced to move through. The, the wreckage that was, you know, his his hood, and it's like the trenches of his friends and neighbors, like the rubble, the ashes of them. And as he moves through them, he's flashing back to like his uh, dark trench warrior days in World War II and remembering his sins then, that and then kind of putting it together as we go along that he's responsible for all of this. These people were out to get him, you know? This is personal. And uh, it's like going to be the most brutal night of his life as he fights in the uh, remnants of, you know, his friends and neighbors alongside uh, Lady Satan here, who's a uh, who's also like really, you know, a great uh, character when it comes to revenge. She saw her husband firebombed by Nazis, saw his face melt right in front of her. She's out for blood. She loves killing him. She's she's kind of the mouth and she's mischievous. She's acrobatic as all hell. And has uh, hidden gun uh, barrels in her heels, and she uses a little bit of witchy magic to make her uh, to make guns float around her. So she's kind of like a walking team of like guns firing at you <laughs> at all times. It's pretty brutal. So would you say it's like uh, got a little Solomon Kane influence in it, where he sort of has to make up for the sins of his previous life? Oh, that's a really great uh, question. I didn't even think of Solomon Kane for this. I was thinking. Like, I just liked that trope in terms of, like, the damage you do coming back to harm you. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to explore that with a Dark Avenger hero who does a lot of damage. <laughs> um, like, I wanted I wanted to... Um, I wanted... Because I wanted to explore the good, the good guy who walks the line between being a good guy and just, like, another bad guy. Just, a, like, just another thug. Just another, like... Because I, I like to think of Black Terror as scaring the hell out of like kind of creeping out the other heroes mm -hmm. um but uh he's you know but yeah so from this it wasn't like um a solomon kane thing as much it's not like he has to you know solomon kane is more like grandiose like make a pact and do what is right you know, right and slay the evil this is more like this hero is breaking down like he's He's uh he's walk he's he's having blackouts where he just will kill friend or foe he'll kill anyone around him, and it's because of this terror gas he uses that gives him his powers. So it's that double edged. Uh. 
thing where his terror gas that gives him all this power is like killing him. It's, it's ruining his life. It's messed with his relationship, you mm -hmm. know, in the past, because one of the things that I, I added to terror to kind of make him live up to the name black terror is that he has a scarecrow effect on people from breathing out the gas. The byproduct of that is something that makes you see him as what you fear the most. So before oh, he kills cool. you, you're like pissing yourself or maybe you're running or maybe you're just screaming and shooting at him. But either way, like you see him as something completely different and horrific. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing I play with in the story. I mean, there's even a scene where his wife is like seeing him as something she fears and she's just kind of used to it now. And it's all weird. It's just kind of messed up, you know, anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get too into that, but it's this, it's a very like raw human kind of tale about fear and it's about um, the damage we do coming back and about how we can, you know, maybe start to fix things, maybe, you know, maybe, or like how it's about how far we can go into our own darkness and maybe come up again for air. You know what I mean? It's, it's mm -hmm. all these things I love in, in classic storytelling mixed with like just dark Avenger storytelling, which is what got me into comics when I was a kid and first went into stores in the eighties. It was all about the Punisher and Wolverine. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. and um, and and Ninja Turtles, of course. Like that's where it was at, <laughs> and um, the, that uh, changed my life. And then when I walked in, I saw Frank Miller's cover with Wolverine covered in all the ninjas. You know, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it changed my Classic. life. It changed my life. I had to make stuff like that. Like I wanted to draw that every day, all the you know. So yeah, um, this this in this when I was writing the script it kept writing itself it, even though i hadn't planned on doing this as my next project it just kept writing itself it was too fun it was too um it, i was it, i was going through a dark time i think i was going through a breakup when i wrote this and i was up late at night like all emotional but like writing uh -huh. the hell out uh -huh. of this just writing it to death and it was so good i was like dude like i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be forced to deal with black terror and make him give him a comic now because this is too good this is my dark avenger hero story i'm proud as hell of it i want to share it with you guys the cast is great Lady Satan is like already kind of a f favorite, but a lot of people like Eric uh, love Lockshot. Lockshot's kind of the our, best. Uh, mutantated eye sniper. She's the best. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Yeah. yeah so if I understand you, uh, you're saying there's a few differences between this and Monster MD. Yeah, <laughs> this is your, this has more violent action. And it, you know what? Lady Satan's so funny in this. You're going to feel that like that Monster MD like wit. It's in, it's great. She's so funny. You guys are gonna love her. Um, but yeah, it's different in that this is like look at these characters. There's a bigger cast, uh, broader scope. Uh, we're doing, of course, more super. We're doing more superhero, but it's superheroes my mm -hmm. way, which of course is like, I I'm, I was trying to figure out what I am today. It's kind of like Bruce Tim is hanging out with Tim Burton, <laughs> sort of. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. like I like kind of gothier, darker That's a good idea. stuff. Like I'm not to I'm not totally Tim Burton, now, or at least back when he was good, right? Right. <laughs> right. That was a long time ago. Let's be honest. Was a, that was like in the nineties. But, like, <laughs> but like still, I I I do feel like I, I I just use that as an example for I have a little I I have a little bit of a darker feel to my stuff that I go for, but um, but at the same time I have like a fun vibrance to it. So like, yeah, this is very me still. I feel like there's still more monster md than meets the eye to this because it's also like crazy sci-fi meets supernatural um uh, right. which is you know big thing in monster md definitely and it looks like you still have the same art team right uh we tanya is not on board unfortunately oh, okay. oh god i would love to have her but she's on with uh tales from the classroom 2 uh, still working so okay, I'm, cool. I'm actually talking to like a few different amazingly talented colors. <laughs> I've done a lot of different test pages and it's been interesting. We're doing, we're going to try to make it look like unlike anything out there. You know, it needs to be the next level. So awesome. And uh, yeah, so you are also on um, the, so it's the, these campaigns confuse me a little bit. There is Tales from the Classroom 2. But there is also uh, uh, Tales from the Classroom Cthulhu Files. Are are you on both campaigns, or because I you Tales were doing all the Cleo tap, is, right? Tales from the Classroom Two is the Cthulhu Files. Is the sub is sub it? name or the? 
I think so. I don't know. I had I had Rob on here, and it was confusing. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. it's uh, the Cthulhu, <laughs> Cthulhu file, files is like so supplemental. It's a supplemental. Yeah, thing, yeah. right. It's because a supplemental. Okay. Pressure two is its own story. It follows Rob and his, you know, Rob, the character, the zombie Rob and Rob Zombie, uh, and his, 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 the follow up of what happened in the first one, and they're like. Okay. The Cthulhu Files is that sort of supplemental material where you get the the, the Cleotep story, and you get the. Uh, I think there's a, 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 I guess maybe a prequel. There's a there's a backup story. Um, I forget the name of it, but it's also it's also about Rob, but it's a separate. It's not there's part of the, the second issue, if you will. So yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. It's a bit of main story plus supplemental stuff. Yeah, I, Rob's a great guy, but. It was. I was a little confused when he was on. It's like, oh, that's the next one coming out, but it's not the sequel, even though it has the same name in the title. And he's like, yes, but <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea at this point. I just wrote. We just made him an awesome story, and um, I think he digs it. It came out pretty sweet, right? We're not. Yeah. So oh yeah. Now, right. He, <laughs> Eric. Well. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it, I think naming name, naming can be difficult, honestly. Um, yeah. So you yes. want to be as clear as possible. Um, but he did so. say he was very happy with it. Yeah, it's turning out great. The art, yeah. the artists that he's hired have been phenomenal. Um, he's working with uh, uh, the Monster MD team. He's got Matt mm -hmm. Crot, Matt Crot's doing a. Uh, there's one one story that it's got. It's sort of. Uh, bounces between two artists but it, it makes sense in the story so that's pretty cool uh, i i don't remember everybody every artist but um but yeah it's um it's it's neat and it's always fun to i mean it's always fun to letter anything vaughn writes because it's beautiful and then the designs like the 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 monster designs uh, mm -hmm. they each have their own balloon which can actually kind of be kind of challenging because it's like okay the zombies have this but then the mummies have this okay and it's just trying to keep all that straight can be a little, a little, it can, you can pull your hair out sometimes, but you know, it's for the love of the game. It's so, uh, a pretty book. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Colorful. From what I've seen, it looks gorgeous, but uh, Eric, so, um, you know, talking about developing as artists, uh, mm -hmm. how, how much when you're lettering these days, do you feel like going crazy with, um, the lettering? Cause I was, um, I, I was I just did a review for Starlight Cats, and I have to say, in most books, as long as I can read the text and it doesn't like get in my way, mm -hmm. um, I consider that like job well done. But this was one of the ones that uh, I noticed uh, because you just went crazy. It seems like, uh, and <laughs> and it's yeah, man, you got okay. like words coming out of uh, like words sort of like in their own traced bubble and yeah, like yeah, just yeah, a lot and yeah uh it's it's more than a good enough to okay. be done kind of job so like do you, you as a letterer do you feel now like you can sort of crank it up and and do more than you were before or uh is this well, first of all first hmm? of all thank you um <laughs> it's it's nice to be noticed you know um but but seriously, um, it, it it depends. It depends on the book. It depends on the on the project, the artist that I'm lettering over, the theme of the book. Um, I've done over a hundred books since I've started. I said started back in what 2018, um, and each one sort of brings its own flair, and some have more flair than others. Uh, for instance, if I were to do a a story that's more set in the real world where it's just real people. Maybe there are no powers or if they are, they're very uh, subdued. I don't tend to bring a lot of um, uh, bombastic lettering to the project because unless the, the editor or writer or whoever is asking for it to be more over the top, mm -hmm. I just, I feel like it it's out of character for the book. If I, if I overdo it, um, if I mm, like, that let, makes let, sense. Me, let me try and let me see if, if I can come up with an example. Uh, let me look at my books here. So like, uh, 
like the Lucent, for instance. Mm -hmm. So I just finished Ooh. that. If I would have, if I would have lettered the Lucent, like I lettered, uh, let's say, Graveyard Shift, I, it, I don't think it would have worked. Like Graveyard Shift has that '90s energy, that mm -hmm. bombastic thing where you want to have a lot of uh, variety in what you do uh, because there's so much going on. Each character sort of, many of the characters have their own word balloons, you know styles and all of that i just don't feel like that lends itself to something that's a little bit more is you know subdued in its storytelling like the lucent and i don't think that's i don't think i'm describing it well but um no no i get what you're saying but but yeah so if, so each project is different and when it comes to starlight cats you know it's a fantasy um so there's a uh, a bit more room to play with it and it still works within that the world. universe it works yeah. within that world right so um you know i'm not gonna give um you know ella a bunch of crazy uh ella, first ella is under my umbrella. All that because i on the other fit. hand think everything should be over the top and bombastic because <laughs> which is how i letter vaughn scripts yeah mm-hmm other but look at this this was kind of a oh that was kind of a big clap there i'm glad you kept it subdued so I'm all of the sound good. effects in the lucent were drawn by were put in by mike and they're in the artwork so none of the sound effects in the lucent are mine oh that's not you okay that's okay. not me hmm. so where what's a good ex okay oh here we go i think there was one sound effect that i was able to add we are worthy we are worthy yeah and that's a lot cool. of Sometimes I will I will reletter a project. Looks good. You know, I, like I did that with Unforgettable Tales. I've done it with Lucent. I've done it with. Uh, this looks good. Uh, Doc Alpha, I think. Um, so project that either was fully or partially lettered by somebody else. I Tales from the Classroom was that way as well. Um, I do tend to, uh, unless they want me to just start over, I do tend to you know keep it um, consistent with what was done before, but just put my spin on or my, you know, put my English on the ball, if you will. Um, so uh, that's why the Lucent is more subdued because yeah. I can just, you just look at it and you know, well, this is the style it needs to be. If I go over the top, like Viking Wolf for me, I did Viking Wolf. And that was like, how can I make this <laughs> um, just Joe Mad Battle Chasers over the top? And that's what I went for with like, if they're yelling, the word balloons are enormous. Mm -hmm. Like there's, you pull out a, uh, you know, if, if Mark had a certain bolded word, I would make sure that that word was super emphasized where it's like, mm -hmm. it's red and it takes up a whole, you know, width of dialogue that three or four words take up in a balloon. Very, uh, very much how like that work was done in the, in the mid nineties where, Everybody was doing digital lettering and jumping in and sort of going over the top. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That Viking Wolf art style just played perfectly with it because I saw those first few pages. I was like, "Well, this is just this is just Joe Mad. Like this is, has that energy mm -hmm. to it." So it needed that energy in the lettering. So I just try to keep the energy of the book same way. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, man, he matches your aesthetic. He cares. He gives a damn. I it's care. weird whenever like you when you make comics and with different artists i mean you could be working with the best artists in the world it doesn't mean you both know how to match like aesthetics to create like a vision together that works well like to right you want. Mm -hmm. like it's it's really rare when you can find people who get it and know how to make it happen and that's where pros like eric come in you know like yep he will adapt on a dime to like whatever your project is. And that's, that's cool. I, I try to do that as a writer for whatever you give me for your comic. I mean, I have to be the custodian of it and respect it mm -hmm. and make a story that makes you like it even more. You know what I mean? Without breaking it and changing everything. So, so yeah, you're, you're not going to take my main characters and put them in a thruple. <laughs> oh, thruple. I don't even think I know what that word exactly means. And I don't want to. It sounds dirty. <laughs> Just, uh, it's, it's, it sounds like um, three Wolverine, Cyclops, merged. and Jean yeah. Grey. Okay, um, it's exactly what I thought it sounded like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Wolverine would let like Scott in on his action. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I found that the most offensive part of the whole thing is like, if somehow it made sense in the story, I might be okay with that. 
But none of those characters, well, maybe Gene, but certainly Scott and Wolverine would never go for that. No. <laughs> yeah. You might say they would have to be brainwashed in order to do it. If only there were somebody in that group of three that could do that. <laughs> God, uh, everything's Gene now. Everything's, <laughs> it's all her day. fault. Yep. Everything. When in doubt, blame the woman is what I'm saying. I'm blaming the lame writers that are like trying to impress their okay, stupid maybe friends that. at parties. Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did? <laughs> I don't think they talk like that. Tonguing Cyclops. <laughs> the rooms are connected. <laughs> I don't think they even like the way like the other like I don't think they even like being in the same room with each other a lot of the time. Like everyone. No. No, they never do. They're, they're making out and that bunk buddies and shit. It's so stupid. Ew. What a wasted era of comics. What a wasted era. At least we got some cool indie stuff out. Yes. We'll get some cool yes. indie stuff and then in, in the next decade or so when uh all that stuff's over with. It'll be cool again. Because all of us will be, if we're not still doing our own thing, you know, we'll not not just us specifically, but like the indie guys will we'll we'll take over and all that all the SJW stuff is oh. gonna go away. As I it it's never gonna that's not gonna last. It never does. So and we'll get we'll uh, cool stories of characters that people have liked since the sixties and, and beyond, mm -hmm. they're gonna return. Uh, but for right now, it's, you know, make mine indie. Make mine Battle Brick Road and Monster MD. I don't know. You know, I um, somebody posted online, it was a, a letter from Steve Ditko. Uh, it was a kid who wrote to him in the 80s. And he wrote asking Steve, are you uh, happy that, um, you know, your character Spider-Man is known and loved everywhere throughout the world? And Steve being Steve, he wrote back, um, you know, it, 50 years before you were born, there were famous comic book characters that nobody remembers now. Spider-Man is already in decline, and every character that you love <laughs> will be gone. <laughs> Steve. Jeez, Steve. But uh, other than, you know, breaking a little boy's soul, um, he is kind of right that, you know, yes. we, we sort of instead of just retreading the same old characters, like I like Batman, you know, I like the X-Men, but the parts that I love are all in the past and I can always go and visit them when I want to. But, you know, at some point you got to start making new stories, new artwork. The truth is, is that the way this world is, is that it's all fleeting. I don't care how rich or famous mm -hmm. you are. Let, uh, quick. Name a popular actress from a 1970s TV show that was a hit. Uh, like, Farrah, Farrah Fawcett. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. that was a good one. That's a good one. But like, I like it's this usually, like, like this can become like it gets. It, you start with her, and then like it, it falls off really quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like you don't remember a lot of them, and it's not yeah. because they weren't great. They were still great. You know what I mean? They did great things. It's just that that's the way that's the nature of the human brain and time and mm -hmm. every, everything's very fleeting um death is around the corner guys you try to make some cool stuff hope someone remembers it even if they do like a lot of things just still aren't remembered you know what i mean it's, it's yeah, very yeah, easy, yeah but you just kind of steve dicko was just kind of preparing the kid for that <laughs> reality but at the same time when you have a character like spider-man like Good luck erasing that out of kids' imaginations forever. Like, yeah, luck. yeah. Like he might have said it was in decline in terms of sales for like whatever the hell he wrote that letter, but look at it now. Like, how many people are signed up for the next movie? You know what I mean? Next movie, sure. Spider Man Two, the game. Like, there's a lot, a lot of money. Like, they, they, they do. You know, the the, the new line of underoos for six to eight year olds. It's Marvel never going to end. What is Marvel worth right now? Because, well, because, because of the movies, it's like yeah. three billion or something. Not because of the comics. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know, but I think technically they gave the movies over to Disney. So I think Disney technically owns Marvel movies. I oh, think well, Marvel too. Comics only owns the comics. Just like they would own Star Wars, right? Like it's Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's theirs, but they they're like, Oh yeah, you're totally doing your own thing. Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Crazy. All right, but I know you guys are busy. You have your own show coming up soon. 
answering mm -hmm. every question. Every is it going to be every every question? Uh, oh, we're gonna, gonna animals we're gonna, fighting. Yeah, we're we're just gonna the the universe has questions and we have answers. I mean, I don't know I don't know how else to say it. Um, that's what we're here for. Uh, we're here to straighten people out. On we have uh, answers. Rob has videos of like animals attacking. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you know, and, you know, Vaughn's gonna fall asleep halfway through. <laughs> That'll be a good show. I don't think we're going to have Clint tonight, so Aww. there may be some questions that just can't be answered in their fullest extent. So no candy-related uh, questions. No candy-related. That was a fun stream, though, but talking about all that candy. It made me uh, <laughs> gave me all the cravings. Oh. so Cam, uh, it seems like he's going to take up that challenge. I, I welcome it. We have a whole list of questions from... I guess it was two weeks ago now from uh, Antoine Dennison, who's always in our chat. He was hanging out with uh, Bancroft as well. And uh, he had this list of, uh, I think he called it like the CG code of ethics. And it's all of these questions that he put in a comment. So we're going to go over Ooh. all of them. There's like 10 of them. We're going to go over all of them and give our, give our hot takes on like, uh, you know, just like the do's and don'ts of uh, CG related stuff. That makes sense. Good for any upcoming, upping, up and cominger who yes. wants to make comics. Yeah, and, and I didn't know there were do's or don'ts. This is cool. Well, it's all yeah, it's how to not be a sleazeball in comics gate. <laughs> I think I don't know. We'll figure that, it out. Uh, sleazeballs beware. Shouldn't be too many rules. But thanks yeah. a lot for coming, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. And everyone, um, you should definitely stop by their channel, or Eric Weather's channel. It will be on very soon. About 20 minutes or so, yeah. About 20 minutes. And um, we'll see everyone later. See ya. Bye.